Georgia can clinch the FCC East with a win at Auburn. This game has just kicked off here on ESPN2. We send you now to Auburn, Alabama. Mark Jones and Brock Heward. Nothing on the return, and that's where Aaron Murray of Georgia, the quarterback, will take the reins of the offense. Mark Jones chopping it up alongside Brock Heward. Allison Williams down on the sidelines. This is the 116th chapter of this rivalry. The Georgia Bulldogs, it's pretty simple for them. A win tonight, and they get a chance to play in Atlanta for the SEC title. Mark Richt has taken this team to 11 consecutive bowl games. How do they close the deal tonight? So you count on your best players like Jarvis Jones and Aaron Murray, but you also count on your veterans that can taste this. Six starters defensively are seniors, and Aaron Murray making his 37th start. Well, he's hoping to close it out, get that 27th and final out. This is Gurley on the screen, and Gurley a game of close to 10. Shuffling up front and keep an eye on 71. True freshman right tackle that just jumped off sides, John Theus. Gurley again stays on his feet, breaks a couple of tackles and is off. Striding it out and finally pushed out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Conley right in the slot, number 31 as well. And this is where you trust your redshirt junior. Georgia's all time leader with 80 touchdown passes in his career. Georgia. There he is, Conley. An impressive opening drive by the Bulldogs. Moving in an early completion for the true freshman. From the 32. Tucks it underneath. Up at about the 35 yard line by Bakari Rambo, number 18. He's a vital part in the secondary for the Georgia Bulldogs. Had a good game against this Auburn crew a year ago. A big pick six for a score. A number of times he's going to jump routes based on a young rookie quarterback, at times telegraphing those throws. On second and eight. Wide open Blake with the catch. And Blake with another first down into Georgia territory at the 42 yard line. Caleb got a nice block and sprung loose on the perimeter and another Tiger first down. Osama with a nice block, number 81. Looking pretty poised on this opening drive. We're going to try and throw here. It's Bray with nowhere to go. Dragged down from behind. Jordan Jenkins making the stop for the Bulldogs. Almost looked like it might be a horse collar tackle for a second there. But that's going to be a big loss on the Tigers. Third and 19. Delivers a strike complete to Bray. Bray brought down to the 34-yard line. So you do the math on that, and uh, it's a field goal of a little bit over 50. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. And their own 20. A reverse to Mitchell, the one-time DB. Now on offense full-time and a first down at the 37-yard line. What kind of impact does he make now full-time here, Brock? The worst nightmare for an opposing defense is Aaron Murray getting into rhythm very early in the first quarter. When he's been challenged through his career in big moments, it's when he's hit and harassed early. He is on point to begin this one tonight. Did a bunch of work at the Peyton Manning Skills Academy in camp. Paying off once again this year, third and two. Play fake. And lots of room ahead of him. And I mean a lot. Gets down at about the five yard line, and it's first and goal for Georgia. To the opposite side of the field, easy money. Great ball handling. Touchdown, Mitchell. And the Bulldogs barking loud here early in the first quarter. Mitchell with his third touchdown catch of the season. 
Marshall Morgan to attempt the point after Adam Erickson to hold. Rambo already with four tackles in the game. Nathan Wallace under a little bit of duress here early. And brought down at the 25 yard line by Jarvis Jones. If you don't already know, Jones began his career out in Los Angeles at USC, had a back injury, and there was thought to be a career ending element to it. Got a second opinion, was subsequently cleared. And continued his career at Georgia. Hard line. It is Auburn football third and ten. Blitz fest. Wallace oh, broke a tackle. Not that one though. Bakari Rambo was coming as well. A pickup of three on the play, but it's going to be time to punt once again for the Auburn Tigers. Defensive coordinator Todd Grantham loves to get in third and seven plus because he has enough speed on the back end of his defense and experience to be able to bring linebackers and free safeties. And Jonathan Wallace, if he's staring at third and seven plus tonight, he will have no chance, no opportunity of success, not with his personnel and lack of experience against this group defensively. You've got to find a way to get off the field. Gurley back in the tailback, dotting the eye. Quick three step drop, batted down at the line of scrimmage and tipped by Demetrius McNeil. Let's go downstairs to Allison. One thing Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo told us without Marlon Brown this week, we would see the fullbacks and the tight ends more involved in the passing game tonight. Already five receptions for the Georgia tight ends. Yeah, good point. Allison and of course, Bennett was injured and Marlon Brown injured in last week's win against Ole Miss, and that's Aaron Murray injured. Taking a little bit of time before he gets up. See what happened here. I'm, I'm not sure. There's no good way to get tackled, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at that thinking. Yeah, especially when a guy by the name of Casanova, middle linebacker, Casanova McKenzie drives you into the ground. You always hate to speculate on injuries, but having gotten the wind knocked out of me a few times, linebackers driving you in the ground, that's what it appears to be. And besides all the production for Aaron Murray, I'll tell you what else he's been is available. And that doesn't get nearly enough credit. 37 starts for the redshirt junior. He's had a few bumps in the road. And he's had a few plays this year against South Carolina and Florida that you scratch your head, but by and large, over three years, that guy's been a rock for Mark Richt. Create a negative play. I look for a negative run blitz here to try to attack this play in the backfield. The toss sweep into the boundary. Gurley held to a gain of about two. And a, they're saying it's a fumble, but not quite. Referee marked him down, gave right. A little overzealous as Murray comes back into the ball game. Two yard gain on the play. Four for four on third downs. Brian Van Gorder, what do you do defensively? Go fans into engaged in this one tonight. Early in the backfield, Mitchell in motion. Murray. Touchdown! What a grab by King! On a rope from Murray. Da 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 da. Oh yeah, That's, top ten. <laughs> get, get yourself ready, Tavares. You put 15 on for your buddy, Marlon Brown, who tore his ACL. That was his number. Your senior counterpart. Oh, got that one foot in. That right foot looked like it got down in time. Six. So you see Swan up here. This is to the field. In time away from that hash mark. Set up the screen well, and McCaleb got a blocker in front of him, and he's off. Ontario McCaleb, Alec Ogletree, with a nice tackle in the open field by his shoestrings against the run, getting underneath the pads of those offensive tackles, and has a quickness to force holding calls like that. He can do it all. On third and 14 now. Stepping up, nowhere to throw it though. And he's going to be brought down at the 44 yard line. Jones there again. Jenkins giving him a little bit of help. You know, 
6 1, 218 pounds, a freshman. Some thought there might be a little bit of a drop off with Isaiah Crowell being suspended from the team. But there's the evidence. Todd Gurley with another first down over the right side. And what you love so much and what you appreciate from the booth up here is just the mix of run and pass. Georgia has been meticulously efficient tonight on offense. Murray with an out and up. Got a man. King. First and goal, Georgia. Tavares King, who scored on a touchdown earlier, picks up 56 right there. Read the body language of your opponent. They get flat-footed. It's game over. Gurley trying to put this game on ice. And another touchdown for the Bulldogs. Set up by Tavares King's long reception. Georgia makes it 27, love. If you were undefeated, playing some of the schedule, and I know it's changed as the season's evolved, but I can't imagine a one-loss team moving ahead of those three MDs. It'll be the Heat, and they finally get to him. D. Ford sacks Aaron Murray. That was one of the formulas for success, potentially, for Auburn in this game, right? Well, I mean, the strength of their group, and as inexperienced as they are everywhere, it's not on their front four. Over 100 starts combined out of that group. D. Ford, Corey Lemonier, who had the critical Rough in the passing earlier. He was first team all SEC a season ago. 16 and a half sacks in his career. That group up front had to be difference makers. That hasn't happened through the first half. Conversely, the offensive line for the Bulldogs has done well, much better than a week ago, as you saw. Have to set up the screen to Marshall and nobody home. And in a blink, it's third down and 20. Good heat up front by Blackson. Turning along for the Bulldogs. They run it, give it to Marshall. He's got the first down and then some. So they win on third down all the way out to the 47 yard line. Oh, significantly break a trend. <laughs> Under a minute to go, 49 seconds. Marshall in the backfield. Pass drop in and out of the hands. Of Arthur Lynch. Fourth and three coming up, and uh, looks like it's going to be the first punt tonight for Georgia. When you jump double moves, you leave guys open, and you get flat footed, and you have a veteran quarterback to read your body language, it's tough to play good defense. Great balance by Curley, and another first down into Tiger territory at the 47 yard line another missed tackle that one by McNeil a 14 yard gain you can't come dive at the ground and not bring your arms and that's just four fundamentals he hands it off to Gurley again a popular refrain and another first down you know, one of the better efforts with a bit of a reshuffle group up front and off to Gurley cutting it back nicely inside the 25 yard line another first down hey we got a special occasion today for the quarterback don't we Allison oh, game for Aaron Murray you guys have to imagine this is an emotional game for Aaron Murray first of all he turns 22 today so what better present than an SEC East title also guys on the other end this is the first game in 14 years he tweeted that his dad is not able to attend his dad battling thyroid cancer so I'm sure he is on his mind as well yeah, definitely a great job Allison right, tonight him and Mitchell Murray on the run Gonna try it himself, but stopped up short of the end zone and fourth and goal coming up. McKenzie Casanova. This one a chip shot from 20 yards out. They stepped up and did something they didn't do much of that first half. Get off the field on third down. Guessing that definition of a win, that's a fit. Defense, which Georgia is. Is under duress again. The catch was made amazingly by Trey Mason, but he got rocked by Christian Robinson. And those are the kind of passes you carry the running back off the field with his head turned around.
it off to Marshall who has the first down, but he's thinking big. See ya. Running big. Showing out big. Touchdown, Georgia. Two points for Perry to the Georgia touchdown. 62 yards and a bolt across the plains. Himself, Jonathan Marshall. I'll tell you what, you're talking about birthdays in the 90s. My, my birthday's next week. I'm just giving you a heads up. Get yourself ready for that SEC championship game. So maybe one of the last chances here that we see an Ogletree, Jarvis Jones, and the rest of these frontline Bulldogs. Third down and eight. Pass complete to Blake, who's been conspicuous by his silence, picks up the first down. At the 43 yard line, a 15 yard gain and a rather uh, derisive cheer from some of the fans. Weeks itself has also looked vulnerable, Mark. Getting beat today by Texas AM. Wallace pulls it out. Nice looking pass down to the 39 yard line, complete to Blake. Emory Blake, one of those seniors that was a member of this national title team a couple of years ago, going undefeated 14 0. And his dad, of course, Jeff, played in the NFL for a number of years with the Bengals quarterback, and he has been uh, one of the rocks for this team that has faced a lot of adversity this year, as has this guy, Ontario McCaleb. And Brock, how tough is it when you're a player when you've experienced the highs at 14-0 and in a national title, playing with a Heisman Trophy winner, and a low like this where you're winless in your conference? No, it's incredibly tough, but this is where you have got to be mature and a leader and, and know and realize that, that these young kids are all watching you and your effort. Nice catch by Blake. Well, that's setting an example, but he fumbles it. He got knocked and put it on the ground. And it's Georgia football. Big hit there by Sean Williams to jar the ball loose. That's the first turnover of the game tonight. And you'll see Blake at the top of your screen kind of in between. <laughs> I think he was thinking that may be a bubble screen thrown underneath, but he makes the play and that's just tremendous team effort. Look at the number of Bulldogs that are continuing to hustle. You're up 41 and I see five, six Bulldogs in the screen to the one Auburn Tiger. A little heat on the youngster and they Light him up. A sack back at the 48-yard line by Ogletree. Another guy who missed some games earlier in the year because of unspecified team violations. <laughs> you think Mr. Grantham is still wired? Wow. And he's still bringing the pressure. Another line stun here. And the young quarterback holding on to the ball. And I think Mr. Jones probably going to get credit for a half a sack with his buddy Ogletree. Probably no better feeling. I can't speak because I wasn't a linebacker, but I'm guessing no better feeling when two two guys meet at that quarterback in the backfield. Somebody's got to tell me what Coach Grantham was all heated up about. Fair catch called at the 23-yard line by McGowan. Man, every last attention to detail. That's how you become a champion, and that's what they're going to need. Mark Richt is going to get what he really wants, not just an SEC East title, but an SEC championship. May brought down at about the 41 yard line and under a minute to go now Georgia looks like it's got its shutout firmly in hand. They're going to punt it right here or maybe they might not have to. Fourth down and two. You love that as well. That's offense. That's defense to Allison's point earlier about a quarterback and what he can do and on the flip side for Gene Chizik and this Auburn team you're playing a true freshman you're playing a bunch of them. Two and seven turns into two and eight. Thankfully for the Tigers, they'll have Alabama A&M before they end the season in the Iron Bowl. And a tough year is only going to get tougher here, I think, unfortunately, in that finale. The college football landscape turned upside down today. Alabama losing at home against Texas A&M. Oregon undefeated out there. Notre Dame undefeated out there. 
But as far as Mark Richt is concerned, 38 0 will make that sore hip feel a lot better, albeit even just temporarily. His field general, Aaron Murray, the grad student, with a show of appreciation for his head coach. With seven seconds to go, Murray today, 18 of 24, three touchdown passes, 208 yards. Uh, and you know, when you're a former quarterback like Rick was, uh, you can be a little bit overly critical of your quarterbacks at times. Sure. The Georgia fans, nothing to be overly critical tonight. You came out, you wanted your team to start fast, to dominate from the beginning. They did that, and for Auburn, you're continuing to reel. And now you know exactly what the conversations will be this week and in the weeks ahead. That's going to be the last play of the game. The defense earns its shutout. They are now the SEC East champions for the sixth time in 13 seasons. And another bowl game on the horizon. Final score once again, Georgia 38, Auburn nothing. Up next, college football scoreboard followed by UCLA Washington State. For Brock, Allison and the rest of the gang, good night from Auburn, Alabama.